So we are flying with our dog in the cabin on WestJet Airlines. This is our very first time doing it, so let's see how it goes. If it's your first time flying with your dog or your cat on WestJet or any other airline, I'm going over all the tips that I documented when we took our last flight with our dog. So this was my experience flying on WestJet, but after a lot of research, it appears that most of these details also apply to Air Canada and other airlines as well. So the first thing that you do after you book your flight, whether you booked it online or on the phone, is you do have to call WestJet, let them know that you're going to be bringing your dog with you. You do have to talk to an agent because you can't book a seat for your dog on the plane online. So this is to add your pet to your itinerary, and this is because the airline only allows four pets at once on any given flight. The airline recommends that you book a seat for your pet 48 hours before your flight, but since they only allow up to four pets in the cabin at once, I recommend you call to get your pet added to your itinerary as soon as you book your flights. Here we are at the airport. Hi. Thank you. To be honest, I'm shocked that there wasn't more of a process to bring a dog. We checked in with the agent. Even though we didn't have checked bags, you still have to go see the agent if you're bringing a pet. It was really smooth. They just made sure we had our carrier and that she could fit inside. If you're like us and only fly with carry-on luggage, you can't just bypass and go straight to security. You do still have to go see someone at the airline desk. They check your pet in. They will print out a boarding pass. They'll mark it with a P for pet. They just want to make sure that you have your carrier and that it's a good size and that your dog fits inside comfortably. We had Miley on our leash with us when we checked in. We didn't have her inside of her carrier. The airline agent didn't end up checking, but I think it was pretty obvious that she fit inside, so it wasn't too big of a deal. If it's a tight fit, they're going to want you to demonstrate that your pet fits inside comfortably. Going through security is pretty straightforward. You will have to hold your dog with you as you go through the metal detector. I had her sweater on and her leash and that was totally fine. It wasn't too big of a deal at all. It was super smooth to go through security with a dog. As far as going through customs, the border agents will likely ask for a up-to-date rabies certificate and a list of recent vaccinations to make sure that your dog is up to date. So make sure you have those printed out and handy and ready to go and you won't have any issues. So I would say still get here really early just because through security, you just have that extra luggage you have to deal with. So I think between the two of us, we used probably eight bins for all of our stuff because we've got Miley's carrier and I have to hold her so it just takes a little longer to get through. Even though it was a breeze, just make sure you give yourself lots of extra time. As far as what's considered a personal item and a carry-on item, the good news is is that when you're flying on WestJet, your pet carrier is actually considered a personal item. So this is really good news if you only like to fly with a carry-on bag, which means that you can still bring your normal carry-on and use the pet carrier as your personal item because it fits under the seat. And on our last WestJet flight that we flew with Miley, I actually had my small purse and the pet carrier as my personal items because they were both able to fit side by side side under the seat. My Sherpa brand pet carrier is a size medium, so if you have a small enough purse, you can still bring one of those under the seat below. As far as how strict the airlines are with the pet carriers, they absolutely must fit under the seat. They require your carriers to be soft-sided so that if you do have to squish them down a little bit just to get them to fit underneath, that is okay. They're perfectly fine with that as long as your dog is still perfectly comfortable and not going to be in any distress because of that. The unfortunate part is that when when you are in the cabin, you do have to keep your pet in its carrier for the duration of the flight. You are allowed to unzip a little bit of the top of the carrier and allow your dog to pop their head out or if you need to give them food or water or treats or something like that. You are able to do that, but they do need to stay in the carrier the entire time. You can't bring them out and hold them on your lap. This is one of the reasons I love the Sherpa brand carrier that we bought because it's got a side opening and a top opening as well. So it was a lot more comfortable for Miley when I opened up the top of the carrier because she was able to pop her head out and see what was going on in the plane. So this is the carrier we got to fly in the cabin. It's Sherpa brand and it's got lots of mesh siding. It's soft sided so you can squish it down a little bit. 
It did come with a Sherpa lining in here, but we have also added uh, another blanket just to, just to make it really comfy for her. Lots of breathing room. As far as how much it costs, it does vary by airline. When we were flying from Canada to the USA, it was $50 each way to bring Miley. It should be noted though that service dogs that are flying with someone who has a disability, they are not charged a fee. If you're flying with your service dog, you do still need to notify WestJet or any airline at least 48 hours in advance before your flight so that they can be booked onto the plane. Unfortunately, emotional support animals are no longer considered service dogs. So even if you do have an emotional support animal, you do still have to pay the fee. As far as weight limit goes on WestJet, there's actually no official weight limit for animals. However, there is a size limit. Likely any dog or cat that's over 22 to 24 pounds probably isn't going to be able to fit in a carrier small enough to fit under the seat. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what size of dog you can bring. She is about seven pounds, but she does have long legs. So this one is a little bit bigger than for a regular chihuahua, but it's soft-sided so it can squish down a little bit. Here's a few more tips about bringing a dog in the cabin. Some things to consider that I definitely wish I would have known before booking my flights. The first thing is, is that you cannot have a pet carrier under the seat in emergency exit rows. Chris and I normally book the emergency exit rows just because he is six foot nine. We learned this the hard way after booking our flights. We wanted to add our dog to our itinerary and the service agent informed us that we had to change seats. So just make sure that you do not book emergency exit rows if you're bringing a pet with you. Finally, if you're on a WestJet flight with the premium seats in front of you, so the first three rows, avoid booking the aisle seat in row number four. This is because in front of you, there's only going to be two seats. The storage under the chairs is actually a little bit skewed. So the aisle one has very little room, but the middle and the window seats have plenty of room. So if you're sitting in row four or whichever row is directly behind the premium plus seats, just make sure you don't plan to put a pet carrier on the aisle seat because there's no room for it. If you booked a WestJet vacation package, you can absolutely bring your dog with you on the plane, but you do have to make sure the hotel you're staying at does allow pets. I hope this video has helped you feel a little more comfortable about bringing your dog or your cat in the cabin with you on WestJet or any other airline. If you're interested in more dog-friendly travel videos, I have a video on visiting Scottsdale, Arizona and all the dog-friendly things you can do there. And as always, please check out my blog posts on the topics. I have all the links below and in there I've included a lot more detail than what's covered in this video. So give those a read if you're interested. If you're finding this video helpful, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you're notified when I come out with more videos like this.